Hi fans of high quality entertainment. Today I am talking about what I feel is a very underrated album from 1997. Now I have in the title Classic Rock but this particular album by this artist isn't necessarily classic rock but the artist himself is kind of in the classic rock genre, so I'm just sticking with that for all of these albums. And as I've said before, if you are a big fan of this artist, you might not consider this album underrated. But overall, uh, compared to all of his other albums, I feel it is overlooked. It is. That's right, David Bowie, Earthling. Now, I, my, my CDs are a mess. I'm going to have to reorganize them. I have to reorganize them every few months because I take them to the bedroom and listen to music at night, take them to the car, so they get all mixed up. So, anyway, I've got, so far, quite a pile of... Uh, David Boy CDs, and I still have to buy a few more. In no particular order, I've got Outside, which I'm starting to listen to, and I think it's going to take a few listens. Hunky Dory, absolutely love it. Possibly my favorite David Boy album. Ziggy Stardust, what a classic. Rock and Roll Suicide is one of the greatest closing songs on any album. Aladdin Sane, I love it. His sort of debut album, I know he did one before, but this is considered by most to be his debut album, also called Space Oddity in the States. I didn't think it, it was a very good album for years and years except for Space Oddity, but I love this album. Of course, Black Star. Possibly his best album. Diamond Dogs, I absolutely love. I used to have it back in the 70s, and I, and I did enjoy it, but, you know, then I kind of just drifted off. But I am such a huge David Bowie fan now. And we'll get to Earthling in a minute. Just be patient. It's my birthday, okay? Uh, the Man Who Sold the World. Some of the music on this is Black Sabbath heavy. In fact... If you closed your eyes, you would think Tony Iommi's and the band are on a couple of the tracks. David Bowie Low, superb. As you can tell, I basically love all of his albums. Lodger. Lodger took me a few listens to get into, but now I absolutely do love it. Love it. Heathen. I've only kind of played the first three, four songs, and really enjoyed them. I don't know what it is about the later David Bowie albums, but it's almost like I don't want to listen to them. And <laughs> There's just so many great uh, Bowie albums previously that I'd, I don't have the time. But definitely I'm going to be playing this one more. Uh, Let's Dance. I haven't really played too much. I love, you know, China Girl, Let's Dance, Modern Love. But there's a new remastered version, single version, uh, from the recent box set, and they're out now, so I'll get those, the remastered versions. Station to Station, awesome. Heroes, once again, it took me a few listens to uh, really appreciate, and I appreciate it. Now, Scary Monsters, uh, absolutely love it, but listening to it recently, I think I like a lot of the other albums of his more, including Earthling. But still, this is superb. And <clears throat> Teenage Wildlife, I think, is one of his most underrated songs. His debut album, his real debut album, I kind of enjoy it. At first it was like, you know, I'm not going to play this more than once. But I really, I, you know, it's got his personality and everything. and. I enjoy it. The 
the next day. Now I'm covering this because there's a rip, so you don't see the rip. Someday I'm going to replace this. I don't know what happened there. I blame the cats. But the next day is incredible. I love it. And Young Americans. I definitely got into this after a few listens. And the only of the, of the studio albums that I haven't completely loved now is Pinups, which I need to listen to more. But it will never be one of my favorites. I know that. And I might as well just show you the three live CDs I have so far. I have this one, and they're all excellent. Stage. And this one. And I also recently played, uh, listened to David Live, his first live album on Spotify. And I used to, you know, read the reviews. It's not a very good album. I think it's great, so I'm definitely going to get that at some point. Here we are finally at Earthly. Now, the first time, you know, I bought this and I listened to a, a little bit of it, uh, I found it really abrasive, really loud. Uh, it's known as his drums and bass album. Not that I kind of go into these genres too much. It's like, it's just music. And... So the first couple of listens, it just didn't connect with me, and I really, really didn't think I would ever really like this album. But the last couple of listens, I love it just as much as all the other albums that I love. If somebody said, this is the one of the best David Bowie albums, I could not disagree. It's I don't know if it would be... It'd be really, he's got so many great albums. This would, I don't know if it would be in my top 10, but I'm going to keep listening to it. And It's like I'm, you know, you, you, there's a certain album or two that you finally, oh, I love this, and you start playing it more and more. So I'm going to just keep playing it more and more. So I suggest to you, if you've ever heard this and didn't really care for it, even if you're a David Bowie fan and, uh, Albums like this need to be listened to two, three, four times before you will hopefully connect with it. Uh, I didn't think there were any great songs on this, but now I love every song on this album. Little Wonder, Looking for Satellites, Battle for Britain, uh, Seven Years in Tibet, Dead Man Walking, Telling Lies, The Last Thing You Should do. I'm Afraid of Americans, which is the most popular song from this album, and Law, Earthlings on Fire. I would suggest, if you want to check this, the songs on this album out, listen to Seven Years in Tibet, but give it a chance. Give it a chance. Listen to it two, three, four, five times. And Little Wonder Witch. Uh, I kind of liked it first, but I didn't think I would ever love it. And now, of course, I love it. And, and there's a lot, of, a lot of heavy music on this, like some great guitar work by, I think his name is Gabriel Reeves, without checking the credits. He was in Tin, Tin Machine with David Bowie. There's the label. And I'm not sure if there's a uh, a remaster of this album. I don't know. This is the uh, yeah. This is the original CD from 1997. And the cover. It's some people. Some Bowie fans aren't that crazy about it, but I think it's kind of a different, cool cover. We're in the Union Jack. So yeah, I'm so I'm very excited to say I've discovered another David Bowie album that I absolutely love. He is definitely now 
along with the Beatles, Berks, Blue Oyster Cult, Queen, Led Zeppelin, one of my all-time favorite artists. So check out David Bowie's Earthling and come back sometime, sometime in the future, maybe a few months from now after you've listened to it a few times, and leave a comment below. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Now, the only other thing I want to say about this is, like I said, the first time you hear this, you know, uh, some albums are mixed, so they're overly loud, and this is one of them, I think it's a bit on the harsh side. But I feel, uh, and I read somewhere that the production it's like overproduced. Yes, it might be overproduced, but it's overproduced really well. So like I said, it takes a few listens to really appreciate it. And I think the loudness adds to this album. It becomes a positive instead of a negative. So yeah, David Bowie, Earthling. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Vaughn.